。上集好开心，有 Doctor Pritchard 同我畅谈佢嘅教学经历，同埋宏立嘅办学理念有住密切嘅关系。今集我哋会深入探讨书院里嘅书院，了解学生点样喺完善嘅环境同埋配套之下，实践跨学科嘅学习，当中更加能够喺大学级设备水平嘅实验室进行科研。率先为中学生装备好研习嘅思维，认清对学科嘅兴趣。另外，我会问到校长 ，ISF 系点样将武术同埋二百多项联课活动融入于学生嘅日常课程？我亦都会问问学校嘅收生标准，究竟点样嘅家庭价值观先至同学校嘅理念相符？学生同埋家长需要有啲咩嘅特质呢？不如听听校长点讲啦。形容红利学生，很认真努力学习，双语双文化，非常礼貌。What will you do on holidays?、Oh, what's a holiday? I'm sorry, I don't understand the question.、Um, oh, I know.、Uh, when I'm not in the office here or not in the office at home, I love to hike. So I know on even on your ISF website, there is a specific、um, tab on experiential learning. How it is applied in ISF? So experiential learning,、um, it's important that we realise that、um, education is not an end in itself. You show the 教育到底你的目标是什么？其实加入社会之后，你离开学校，你毕业，你要做什么 ？What all of my employers have asked me to do after I left school was solve a problem. So what do I need for that? 我要首先要研究那个问题，来源是什么？它方方面面我要了解，它的条件，还有我需要什么资源，需要什么知识。然后我分析那个问题之后，好，我可能要尝试这个方法、那个方法。我觉得教育最简单的那个原则是什么？先做人，后做事。We teaching them how to behave. 跟其他的同学，呃，如何交流？跟老师如何交流？跟家长、跟社会的那个成人、社会其他人、陌生人怎么交流 ？How I experience and express myself through my values, through my worldview. So can you, can you share with us a little bit more about、um, your Shu Yuan、uh, program? Actually, Shu Yuan 原来的那个概念是呃，有点像一个教育的实验室。We felt that these were things that we could make part of, complementary to, and supportive of mainstream curriculum. But we found we had students who were very bright, who wanted to explore the world beyond the curriculum, where we taught students how to observe. And trying to strike that balance where students could think and learn, and then we started con to connect that to things like scientific research,、mm. research into the humanities.、Mm. So we have a molecular biology lab, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the molecular biology lab is fully equipped university level laboratory,、um, and students can elect to join the program. And conduct research on their own,、um, usually on their own bacteria.、Mm. And then, if they find something interesting, they publish. And so, this is all helping them to understand、um, the world's a big place, and the curriculum in school is limited in time. So, is this, is this all provided under the school、um, curriculum schedule, or do they sign up extra?、Um, some things we started out with those things being done separately. And increasingly, we have integrated them into the、uh, the mainstream curriculum. So I saw on your website that you offer 220 um co-curricular activities, and some of them are quite unique. Can you share more about those with us? So we do use the term co-curriculum rather than extra curricular. This is our curriculum curriculum. It is co-curricular. For example, Wushu martial arts. That is a subject that students must study in primary school. This is in the United States, it's always part of it. And this is a good example of what we do with some of the other programs. The students learn certain Wushu routines 
And whilst they're doing those routines, they recite poetry or classics. So when they do the action in the wushu routine, their brain is saying, here is the line from the poem that I need to recite. And the kids have so much fun doing it. Uh, in fact, Wushu is uh, one of those programs that uh, some students like to stay involved in. In uh, December last year, the eighth junior world championship for Wushu was held in Jakarta. The Australian team of 12 members consisted of seven current ISF students. So that is a great example of something that um, extends from within the core curriculum into the co-curriculum and into um, activities and sports outside of school. Um, it's interesting that in the current season of uh, co-curricular activities, we have over 4,000 registrations from uh, over 2,000 students. So it means on average, they do at least two activities per week. It may be fencing, which has become quite popular in Hong Kong. It may be chess. The co-curricular programs provide that way of students developing character as well as skill perhaps overcoming the disappointment of defeat, but also commitment. Because when students get to those final examinations and the world beyond, they're gonna need that. The resilience, commitment, courage. Those are things that um, I think are more easily and effectively developed through a rich co-curricular program. How do you select students? I think we need to understand that the education of a child is not something that is done in isolation. We have to have a curriculum, we have to have a teacher, we have to have a school, we have to have values, we have mission statements, but without a really, really important element, that will fail. Parents, the first teacher. Second teacher, here. Third teacher, the environment. Fourth teacher, their experience. All of those have to come together. We need full engagement, belief, commitment from mum, from dad. They need to believe in what we're doing. You know, sometimes you know, we'll have parents who will um, say, um, oh, bilingualism, I'm thinking about strong. But when you get to that point of saying, okay, we're now gonna do maths in Chinese, science in Chinese. We're teaching them how to read Shakespeare. We're teaching them how to read Tang Shu. We're teaching them how to, to explore the mysteries of science in both English and Chinese. We're looking for parents who want that, who are committed to that. And if we can arrive at that commitment to each other, then I think we've got um, a basis to cooperate. There is no school that's perfect. There's no child that's perfect. Getting that, that match, that fit, yeah. your child, your family, your values, your worldview, is that a fit for ISF? So our mission is to Thank you so much for all the inspiring insights and um, sharing. Um, just want to say a huge thank you for sparing your time for addressing our interview. Thank you. Thank you. Today, ISF is really open eyes. 一間由雙語外籍校長領導的香港私立學校除了老师、課程、校园环境之外